opening on on the uh, column below. Uh, we did also affected by COVID a little bit too. We only launched six projects, uh, but uh, fast forward to now, we already uh, having over thirty five new projects adding on to the active three hundred and fifty project that we are uh, uh, doing uh, as we speak. Um, the uh, the sales also it's actually quite impressive in in the North America scale. So we are also doing um, uh, in terms of the new homes, we are doing uh, roughly around an average of about twenty five thousand uh, new home uh, happening. And even under the uh, the COVID backdrop, uh, we still uh, receded a little bit too, but it's nowhere near. Uh, the the bottom of it per se. And as a matter of fact, later on, I'm going to demonstrate to you our market is actually quite resilient. Um, uh, interesting observation for uh, the GTA market is our detached home and the condo price is etching up a little bit in, in, uh, immediately before the COVID. Now, later on, Tahir is going to tell you a little bit about the overall market, about detached market, which is on fire as well too. Now, mind you, the number that I'm giving you, uh, I see there's a lot of colleagues from the States uh, you just need to take 30% off that number. That's the US dollar and I'm presenting in the Canadian dollar. So that right away will give you a certain value. Um, we have been a growing city since, uh, you know, for the past 20 years, uh, our, our new condominium price is actually adding etch up from $656 per square foot, uh, Canadian dollar now upward of a downtown to 1300 bucks a foot. Now, uh, compared to uh, North America, our number is still relatively inexpensive. But in terms of the growth in the Canadian or North America uh, of market, it's actually uh, good. Uh, the overall market, uh, it's uh, uh, we totally recover from uh, COVID year okay. over year. Uh, we are over by uh, almost uh, last uh, last uh, few months we reported 60%, but we just have the newest number. Uh, Tahir is going to tell you in details. Uh, we actually, the year and year sales, we kind of totally recover from COVID already and upwards of 98% of of sales and the detached home price, uh, the slide that I showed you before is a million. Take a look now, it's 1.7 million. Um, so uh, show you a market is actually quite resilient. Now, so what happened to the COVID market? Does it really affect us? Yes, definitely. Uh, we cannot do what we do best. And something that I definitely miss is to meet with all the colleagues from CIPS. I often try to uh, love to travel around the state and meet with you guys. We cannot do that. We, I cannot do the best that I could to meet with you and sell, uh, the, sell you the development. You cannot bring the customer to us uh, as well. So uh, we did negatively affected by it because the whole economic uh, restriction come down to us. Um, but we still uh, be able to uh, yeah. come out from it too. Now, have Toronto experienced past challenge before? Absolutely. As uh, the slide that I show you today, uh, we deal with the SARS outbreak before, the nuclear disaster, the MERS outbreak. Uh, we, uh, we, we kind of recover quite quickly. And we as a developer too, not only we can speak to it, but we also show you example as well too. 9-11, uh, we actually launched one of our our uh, 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 trophy project in Mississauga, where uh, Tahir is based. Uh, at 9-11, imagine a developer can launch a project. It is a complete sold out project. A SARS outbreak too, we launched another project in another city called uh, City of Markham, the greater Toronto area, which is a successful project. In financial crisis, uh, Canada is actually quite resilient to the market. We didn't affect that much too. We also have a, a successful project called Tan York. Uh, Tan York, if you have not been to Toronto, it is one of uh, the major skyline right next to CN Tower. Now, uh, obviously, uh, COVID affected us a bit too. Uh, according to IMF, uh, our economy shrank by 6.1%, part of the, the advanced uh, economy. That's it's uh, some prediction that they made last year. And fast forward to now too, yes, we did definitely affect it by almost 5.4% based on GDP. Uh, but then uh, 2021, we already rebounded back to 44 And then off into 2020, uh, the revised forecast is 2.2. Uh, so I think uh, we, uh, we cover quite uh, good on that too. Our, our stock market, uh, similar to the state too, did not actually go down at all. That actually show uh, you the confidence of the future of our, our market. Um, now for the COVID, it's obviously that, 
definitely unproportionately affected part of our our life. Uh, if you are participated in in the food uh, industry, retail business, obviously is negative affected. Uh, so therefore, our rental performance is not doing as much. But the potential homeowner that you and I have, they or perhaps participated in in the uh, scientific uh, community, technology uh, industry, natural resource, and all that too, they seem to be able to do quite well. Continue to work from home. So uh, the home buying activity is not stopped at all too. Now, immediately before COVID, Toronto is also operating in a, a top pinnacle market. We operate at a $2.2 billion investment. Now, partially, it is some of your colleagues bringing the investment too. Uh, but this is the first point that I want to bring to uh, the uh, CIPS uh, team member here. Uh, do not overlook the referral business. And according to NOR, we, there is over $19 billion of potential referral business that may not be actually be able to, to, to capture. So Toronto being one of the North America uh, active uh, economic uh, metropolitan center, this is an area do not overlook. Uh, pay the eyes and ear around to see if uh, uh, they will be interested in, in the inbound business. And perhaps uh, there is a lot of uh, a business opportunity to the States as well too. Because the backdrop, if you take a look at the Canadian market, of the 3 million richest family, of which $6.7 trillion access are ties into real estate. Now, this also included U.S. holding as well. So meaning to show you the love of real estate from the Canadian for the inbound business for you as well. So that is something that you, uh, is a pretty interesting fact that our CIPS uh, needed to uh, understand. Now, the rental, mar uh, the rental market, you hear a lot of negative news about the rental market. Yes, a rental market that was never, uh, uh, negatively uh, impacted due to the COVID closure. But I wanted to point that out to you that our supply issue is also quite uh, uh, high as well too because of all the condos that uh, our Toronto Realtors sold. Uh, this year, we added almost 7,000 more condo to it too. Now, the demand obviously lower now, no immigrants, no foreign students, but our market is still performed relatively uh, strong. Uh, we have been anticipated it will be dropped like this type of situation, 20 to 30%, but we only drop around 7.5%. And then if you actually the dollar figure, you take a look, it is only dropped by maybe be ten, uh, you know, a few cents per square foot. So it is not a major effect that on, of our rental market as well too. Um, so uh, would the rental market continue to be low for uh, uh, forever? Absolutely not. Because of the immigration policy, there is an additional 200,000 uh, rental unit we needed for the next 10 years uh, because of the immigration growth. So the chart here demonstrated to you uh, that uh, we need actually a lot more condo uh, based on immigrants and foreign students coming through. So looking forward to the future, what we needed to pay attention, uh, I'm sure that's similar to your market as well, too, is uh, we needed to focus on the coronavirus. We needed to make sure that we get out from this uh, challenge, uh, uh, then uh, we would off for uh, some positive start. Um, the other things that we needed to, to take a look to, uh, the condo uh, prices, it is actually quite uh, uh, strong and all across Canada, all the way from uh, Hamilton to uh, Vancouver. Obviously, Vancouver and Toronto lead the charge of our condo uh, prices too, even under the COVID. Um, now, why it drives so much demand is based on the following. We need to take a look at the employment opportunity population growth, the policy interest rate, I'm sure that is non-factor right now in North, North America, and then global geopolitical outlook. Uh, Toronto is pretty interesting. 50% of us are not originally from Canada. If you can treat us, it's almost like a mini New York or mini San Francisco. Uh, we'd be able to collectively speak over 140 different language. So that's attracted a lot of uh, tech company set up shops here because of the global base and immigration, obviously uh, it, it is one of the driving force. So how strong is the immigration? We anticipated at least 400,000 come here on an annual basis. Says, there will be a projected $2.2 million, $2 million influx of immigrants coming this way. And Canada has always announced, uh, already announced that the projected immigrants in 2021 to 2022 is not less than 400,000. Um, so compared to North America, is Toronto really that good? Uh, based on the study got from Stat Canada and uh, Ryerson University, uh, Toronto is actually more 
uh, have more uh, population growth compared to popular uh, right now popular city like Phoenix, Arizona, uh, or San Antonio, Texas, which is talk of the North America market. Uh, so this is actually pretty interesting. Uh, we already gradually creep up the, the world ranking in terms of the global <clears throat> uh, uh, potential in, in the worldwide ranking. Um, assuming we have 100,000 uh, people coming to the GTA, you minimum need 55,000, but the maximum capacity for the build, building industry is only 38,000. Now I'm not accounting for the COVID challenge moving forward. So often we are dealing with the 17,000 shortage. Therefore you see all the news around North America that our market is so robust is because of this. Um, and uh, the tech market is also very interesting. Uh, we are ranked at one of the top five tech talent around North America, uh, Bay Area, Washington, New York, obviously, but Toronto, uh, I'm, I'm assuming Canadian city is already take over the scenes. Uh, we have uh, Google set up shops in here, uh, Netflix set up production uh, office, uh, Facebook, Google, you name it. And then Google just recently pulled out from, from the proposal of uh, the smart city, but there is a lot more other uh, to the background. Um, so uh, uh, why so many people wanted to move to Canada? Um, because of the global inspiration, the safety and security. And then it is also ranked very high in, in the ranking where the world wanted to work, uh, which is uh, us as well too. Uh, tech industry is the big backdrop because there's a lot of uh, uh, tech company, uh, homegrown Shopify. Basically, they are the one who power all the online shopping, uh, become the second most variable company in Canada. Uh, you know, the te Tesla, Huawei, um, you know, Index Exchange, uh, Netflix, as I mentioned, it's all coming here too. So that's not something to be overlooked. Now, the next in terms of the employment uh, uh, program, uh, it is uh, the uh, Hollywood North. Now, for the tech industry and the Hollywood North, this is something that CIPS need to pay attention because if you work closely with a, a company that do production, uh, you'll be surprised to find out that Toronto actually have $2 billion of Hollywood production right at the COVID. As we speak, we're dealing a, uh, a Hollywood production from Kevin Hart, uh, focus on the Toronto real estate market later on, uh, uh, looking forward to see that in the Hollywood screen. Uh, but it's not just that. How about uh, Netflix? Everybody see Netflix, right? Queen Scan back, the backdrop is in Toronto. And how about Amazon Prime? The, the dark comedy called The Boys. And the background, you take a look at that, uh, the major headquarters is actually a Royal Thompson Hall. So they are doing the production here too. Now, I'm not talking about small production and I'm talking about big production. And then how about Apple TV? Apple TV, the seats uh, one and two is actually doing here, right here in Toronto. Imagine the potential business for inbound and outbound too. Now I'm not necessarily talking about the inbound business to Toronto. Um, how about the big Hollywood uh, firm that have a certain talent that they may promote it or work back uh, to us, uh, the uh, either New York or California or wherever uh, you participated. What I think I wanted to remind the CIPS team is to have your eyes and ear open, especially for, uh, for the Hollywood production, the Netflix production, Apple production, technology company. If you, they wanted to move to Toronto, you would just raise up your hand and say, okay, deal with a CIBS because you guys are the global expert. You know relocation, you know, uh, you, you get information about the new city they're moving to. Uh, Toronto will, will be one of the hotspots moving forward. Now, how about, now before we talk about uh, employment, we also take, uh, talk about a step before, education. Education, uh, yes, we are not Ivy League, we are not Harvard, we are not Cambridge, but interestingly in North America, we are not bad at all. And then Toronto, most importantly, we'd be able to have a 42 different post-secondary education opportunity. So therefore attracted a lot of inbounding business too. So what type of number are we talking about? We're talking about over half a million foreign students come here on an annual basis. Now, I mind you, all this figure won't cover by by Stat Canada or you know a real estate board, and this is uh, like they are considered as visitors. Now, for you, if you working with student, if you working with uh, incoming uh, uh, 
uh, uh, a potential foreign student too. All these foreign students come here for the quality of education system here. Our safety and security is ranked highest. And then also work permit program for international student and taking rank two. According to education.com, Canada is also ranked quite high in terms of uh, uh, the international potential study. Now, where I come from Hong Kong, I'm sure that you hear about a lot of challenge between the Hong Kong resident and China residents too. Uh, Canada also announcing a uh, a, a supporting uh, policy for the potential 430 Hong Kong Canadian come this way. Now, here is, uh, and then you must say, yes, demand is so high. How come you guys don't have bubbles? And how come your market is so resilient? So I take the liberty to compare the US market with the Canadian market. Um, one thing that protects us from uh, the bubble is our very straight and conservative uh, financial market. Uh, in, if I take you back to 2008, remember the financial crisis, U.S. mortgage default rate is upward of 11%. For our delinquency ratio, it's less than 0.5%. And even up until now, has been very, very stable. Is this very easy to operate in this market? Absolutely not. Very difficult. We need solid 20%. Uh, we need mortgage approval. We need to check. We have stress tests. We have B20 and all that too. Um, all this uh, un, un, uh, inconvenience, it's actually saved us uh, from a, a very safe and robust real estate market. And then during the COVID-2, Canadian become a super saver. Uh, I'm sure that happened in the state as well too, because um, every, if you were to supposed to travel, I cannot travel anymore. I cannot uh, have a wedding and then all this too. So Canadian become a super saver and guess what they pump the money into our, our, our market. And, and uh, uh, hopefully would we be able to control the COVID, the university start to reopen in the fall. Uh, it would uh, be, be actually bring up the market once again. If you, I just take you to some of the snapshot of the news uh, around uh, in Toronto, the condo market is heating up, uh, employment, it's, it's actually robusting too. Uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of people are assuming that there's no, no, uh, no one is gonna work downtown. Interestingly, major leases have started to sign. Um, uh, even the luxury market, it's actually uh, getting there too. So uh, I'm sure that so far I already uh, kind of uh, uh, tell you the story that our supply uh, char, uh, our demand is actually quite high. Uh, for construction supply, I think that would be something that we needed to deal with in, in the future uh, because the land cost is not going down. Labor, we're also finding very hard to get labor in the future. Uh, the costs keep on escalating. Uh, typical uh, condo breakdown, we don't see the land costs going down too much sooner. Uh, construction uh, costs, soft costs, government charge and all that too. Um, I, I think our price will going to be quite resilient. Now, in terms of supply, Toronto have a unique challenge because of, of the weather constraint, uh, because of the new upcoming uh, uh, COVID restriction. So uh, yes, we have a lot of demand, but the supply side, we may not be able to catch up. So um, in our conclusion, we think uh, the market is actually going to be quite resilient. Uh, for us, definitely there will be a, a lot of factor pointed out to strong recovery. The Canadian government is definitely dealing with spending too. We'll be part of the U U.S. recovery as well too. And then, uh, and the whole market, I, I think, uh, based on the COVID challenge that we have, is actually shown to be quite resilient. Um, and the other one that I want to point it out to you is uh, in, in terms of the North America of all the construction cranes, uh, which uh, North American city you think have the most construction crane? It's not Seattle, Seattle at 42. New York City have 12. Uh, Toronto actually have 140. We're still building the city. We are almost like New York 25 years ago, San Francisco 25 years ago. So there is a lot of opportunity uh, here in our market, especially on the high rise side. Uh, so uh, any further question later on, Tahir is going to give you a more in depth, how to be able to participate in our, our project and, and so forth too. Uh, for us, um, we do uh, think that the market, it's actually going to be quite resilient. And uh, for Trida, we are actively doing 35 different projects, and there is a lot more on the go, and we still are a very robust and positive vote to market. So uh, it is a market do not to be missed. Thank you very much, Vincent. Uh, I really appreciate your presentation. It's fantastic and very detailed, and we really appreciate that. Uh, 
We are all friends. Uh, we, will, we are recording this uh, presentation. It will be uploaded to YouTube where you can download. It will be shared on CPS network and also on my personal global <laughs> network. So if you have any questions regarding any project, you can connect with me. I will be sharing with uh, Vincent. Before I do my presentation, anybody has any question to Vincent? Please, please mute turn off the mic. Somebody's uh, making a noise. Christian. Christian, could you please turn off the mic, please? Anybody has a question for Vincent? Raise your hand. I have a question. How is your situation with COVID right now? Do you guys have a lot of vaccinations in place? Are you open to business or what is your status on COVID? Okay. Uh, COVID, we are still under uh, essential business. So we will we'll definitely be able to continue work. And we as a developer, we will continue to build as well too. And unfortunately in the vaccine fund too, we start roll out, it's actually way behind uh, uh, from a uh, country like United States. And uh, uh, today we just actually get into another lockdown. Hopefully we'll be able to control the virus a little bit. Uh, but I, I do agree, uh, moving forward, uh, the vaccine program, it's a key. And uh, right now our focus uh, it's not actually selling real estate or building condos and our focus is collectively try to have it control uh, but I, I do think that after the COVID under control and the borders start to open our market will be be on fire uh, and even today uh, the, even under the lockdown we still do this number two and I, I think uh, that will be very very positive for, for our market as well. Okay Jenna we have a lockdown uh, in Ontario until 28th of April uh, the real estate is an essential category and uh, no open houses are allowed. Uh, they are encouraging us to show virtually. So we're using a lot of 3D uh, floor plans and viewing of the property, but only some cases in my brokerage, we have adopted policy that we will not show them the property only when the offer is accepted with the condition to go and tour the property and walk away to avoid any type of, uh, especially if property is rented. There's a lot of risk involved. And uh, I am getting my first uh, vaccination on this Friday because uh, they are going with the age group. So I got lucky uh, so I'm, this Friday, I'm going for it. So work is going on with the very cautions. And we are also encouraging our boards to to allow realtors to be given a priority in terms of vaccination because they are taking the risk, taking the buyer and sellers to show the property. So there is some uh, debate. I started it. Uh, I don't know where we are at this moment. I wish you all the best. And just so you know, we are set reportedly going to be completely open as of June 15th. But even us in California, in San Diego, we still cannot do open houses. We can show the properties, of course, with all the COVID requirements, but we still cannot hold open houses. Yeah, yeah. open houses is prohibited here too. There is no open house, but the showing is allowed by appointment only. Okay, okay. So if if you don't have any 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 questions, so uh, you can watch the video. I'm going to do my presentation, then I'll tell you the details about the project. So I'm going to uh, uh, do my presentation, Vincent. Thank okay, you thank you so much. And um, I put my contact number, uh, our contact email there too. Feel free to reach out and check out our website as well too. Uh, to here is our, 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 lo our local uh, le uh, leader here in Toronto. So any question of Toronto, he sometimes have more answer than myself too. So, you know, just definitely reach out to, to him. Thank you. So we work together. So if you have any, for, we're going to talk about the, how we do the business. And I'm going to explain you my presentation. So, Vincent, thank you very thank you. much. I thank really you. appreciate it. He's a yeah. great friend and a, and a very uh, well-known professional in the real estate industry. And I thank you. really appreciate your time. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. So now I'm going to share my screen so we can do the presentation. If anyone has any question, please feel free to, uh, to ask. First of all, I welcome you our uh, second global connectivity conference for CIPS only. 
the goal of our connectivity is to get to know each other and build long-term relationship and facilitate a business collaboration. That's the power of CIPS. So word is in your hand. CIPS is a powerful global network of real estate professionals only available to non-members. My goal is to ignite the spirit of connectivity and cooperation within CIPS global family and, and more confidence we have when we make refer to each other because we follow the professional ethical standards and govern and, and the highest professional standard practices as CIP does, does mean. So we have a confidence and we know that we are ethical, we are professional. That is the worst power in your hand becoming a CIPS. So I give you a little bit of update. I think this is the slide that he has already shown you where you can see the rise of the prices, average prices from last March to this March. So average price in 416 is 1.7 million. And in 905 area, I'm gonna show you the map also, $1.3 million. And you can see the detached home, 26.6% average price increase from last March to this March. Semi-detached, 17.5% increase from last March to this March. Town home, 20.7% increase from last March to this March. And condo was a little bit slow. It now in a positive territory. Toronto is still showing a negative, but 905 area is positive 13.5 and average 2.6% uh, increase. So you can see the semi average prices. I'm gonna show you the other slide. Look at this sale, 90% increase from 2020, 7,945 7, last March, and this March, 15,652, 90% increase. And average price over 21% from March, 902,787 to 1,097,565. Can you believe it? And this is the way the percentage is, sales. 79% increase in sale. New listing, 57.3% increase. And active listing is minus 0.75%. And average price, 21.6% 21.6 increase. And you can see this listing day on, on the market, minus 23%. Property day on market, minus 23%. So properties are coming and going even though the volume has increased. So this is very important for all of you to understand how the real estate. So we're gonna talk about how the real estate business is governed in the province of Ontario. So, so when you are making a referral, you have to have understanding. So first of all, real estate in Ontario is regulated. And Real Estate Council of Ontario is a regulator on behalf of Mr. Consumer and, and Government Affairs. And they, they are mandated education, registration, compliance, and consumer protection program. The law that governs the real estate in profession in uh, Ontario is called REBA, Real Estate Business Broker Act 2002 Act. It was amended by TRISA in 2019 and organize real estate. So CIPS, because we are promoting CIPS, you have to be a registrar in, in, uh, in Ontario. So I'm using CIPS that I am your point of contact. So how it works here, a brokerage can be a sole, sole proprietor, a partnership or a corporation. A broker who is designated as a broker record is responsible for compliance under the act. All salesperson, broker or broker record must carry a valid license in their possession while performing duty under the act. That's a M. So we have a digital presentation. So we have now a regulator law, and now we have an organized real estate. 
You have heard about Canadian Real Estate Association. That's our uh, federal lobbying institute. They also have MLS trademarks and realtor trademark. They own it. Uriya, Ontario Real Estate Profession. This is a, a, a Ontario uh, Real Estate Asso uh, is, uh, Association that does lobbying for any legislations or dealing. They used to do teaching education center, but is now moved to Humber College. And then these are the federal and provincial. Then we have a Misaga Real Estate Board. I'm a director of Misaga Real Estate Board, which is a local board. And then also I have a Toronto Regional Real Estate Board. So these are two that provide MLS system. So we have regulator and we also have organized real estate. So you become, if you want to use the word realtor, you have to be a member of Korea. If you have to be a member of Korea, you have to be a member of Uriya. So you have a choice to join TRAB or MRAB. There are two MLS system in, in Canada, oh, Ontario. So here is a story. There are 110,000 realtors in Canada and 527 fellow of Rural Institute of Canada. I am fellow of Rural Institute of Canada and also director of Rural Institute of Canada, Toronto chapter. And there are approximately 90,000 realtors in the province of Ontario and 301 fellow of Rural Institute of Canada. I do not know how many CIPS here. Uh, Vincent, uh, Vincent Chan is uh, uh, CIPS and I am CIPS. So I want to educate you a little bit about the buying process in the province of Ontario. This is very important for you if you have to make a referral to me, how, what steps that we have to go through to make sure the client that you refer to us that is protected. Remember that we we are we our license is restricted by jurisdiction. So I can only practice in the province of Ontario. I have a, a network of FRI in ten provinces, and I have to make a referral to other FRI or CIPS other provinces. So the first of is when you send me a referral, who we call is a buyer. I'm a CIPS in the middle. So they have to enter into a, a real estate buyer representation agreement and understanding of working with the realtor. So you can see this here. So buyer is your client that you refer to me. I will discuss with him our relationship as a customer or client and enter into an agreement with the brokerage. Then we, after we have researched the property, we'll go to a, create an offer, a conditional offer that offer will have a financing conditions, appraisal requirement, and also inspection clause as a minimum. And once this offer is negotiated, we assist every step of the way to make sure that the, the buyer is satisfied, is protected. And, and when this deal is firm, and we're gonna go through this and, and, and the terms are negotiated, we go to the process of the approvals, mortgage approval, appraisal, inspection, and then we remove the condition. I'm gonna show you next slide. Then if firm deal has been done, it's sent to the lawyer. In Ontario, lawyers are the one who are closing the deal that is negotiated between buyer and seller. And I explained you other things. So buyer is the one who will check the title he will also receive the funds from the lender. He will also transfer the deed and take the money deposit, uh, balance deposit or down payment from the, the buyer and do the closing, uh, closing. Now, when buyer is a foreign buyer, we're gonna talk about that. We have to do consultation with accountant because there are tax implications and we're gonna talk in next slide. So this is a circle of different steps that we take because everybody in Ontario is licensed uh, realtors and they are salesperson, broker, or broker, broker of record. So after this transaction is closed, going through the process, then they get the key and they move in. So I'm going to go to the next slide. So this is a Toronto zone. This is a Toronto zone where you have a central Toronto, you have an east, and you have a west. 
and this is the map of Toronto. Because Toronto have additional tax when you buy a property. This is a greater Toronto area. I am located right here in Mississauga, right here. But we practice across, we're licensed to practice across Ontario. If you buy property in the city of Toronto, you will be paying double land transfer tax. I'm going to show you that. But if you are in this area or you are other area, there will be no second trust, uh, land transfer tax. So foreign ownership, that's the key that you want to know. Foreign buying property is not related to citizenship. Lots of people think that if I buy a property, I become a citizen. No, you Canadian living abroad have a year. Uh, if they stay away for half a year, they become non-residents and any taxation or buying, I'm going to show you the next slide. They become liable to pay as a foreign buyer taxes. Owning a property does not give you immigration privilege. You need to qualify under immigration rules. Land transfer tax. In Ontario, this is a land transfer tax. On my website, city-pro.net, we have a complete uh, automated system where you can calculate the taxes. By the first 50,000, there is a $275 tax. 1%, anything over 250 is 1,950. And anything between 250 and 400 is 2,250. And if the value of the property is over 400,000, so you apply 2% of any difference between 400,000 and the future, value, whatever the value is. In this case, I am assuming it's 2 million. So you add this one, this one, you this one, and also you add this. But this is only other than Toronto. So you have to pay. If you are in Toronto, you are duplicating the same tax again. You remember that. So there is a, 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 a link there from my website there, you can see that. So if you buy a property in Toronto, which I show you the slide, you have to pay the taxes. Financing is available for non-residents up and you have to make sure you pay 35% down. Lender will require income verification, credit worthiness, and prove that you can pay the mortgage. And right now, the mortgage rates are really, really low. Approximately 2%, you can get the five-year fixed mortgage is subject to change, subject to all the condition of the buyer, borrowers providing information. So up to 35%. And also there may be different rules for if you are investing it and, uh, and this is a mortgage is available. Foreign buyer taxes, this is very important. If you are a non-resident, you will be paying 15% tax. It's called uh, non residence the speculation tax. Every buyer, even if a Canadian who lives out of the country for six months will also have to pay this tax if they are. Also, it is recommended that you talk uh, to the accountant and find out when you are buying and selling what happened. But buyer, we know that is 15%. When you are selling a property, uh, the lawyer will hold about 25 to 30% tax until you get a certificate of clearance from CRA to make sure that you, as a non resident you have paid taxes uh, before the money is released. Also, if you are a first time home buyer who plans to use the purchase as their prime residence, maybe eligible for land transfer tax. So there is a link there for you to check it out. It's about $4,000 per person who has never owned a property in the bank. So there's a declaration you have to make with the lawyer. Insurance, all um, when you buy a property, you have to have insurance before the mortgage, uh, mortgage is approved. So you have to secure mortgage before closing. So sometimes uh, it's very important uh, that to make sure, especially if it's an investment property, how the property is used. And this is what we work with our client to make sure their insurance is arranged uh, before they, um, you know, they make the offer. 
process. This is just to simplify the process. First of all, when we are, uh, when we have a buyer, we will, as a realtor or CIPS, we do the uh, client ID. FinTrack is a money laundering and tariff financing act to make okay. sure the money that is coming in is a, a legitimate source, local funds or foreign. We, anything over 10,000, especially in cash needs to be reported to FinTrack. And also PIPEDA is a personal uh, information protection uh, act that deals with the electronic documentation act, which deal with the obtaining information verification. We use driving license, passport, other information is kept confidential to qualify to make sure we're not dealing with a terrorist who is buying a property. So this is a requirement. Once we have done that, we will sign a, a, a buyer representation agreement and, and, and then we will search property, we select property, we per, discuss with the client, we uh, put an offer and we help to negotiate and finalize the conditional agreement of purchase and sale. And it's very importantly, because consumer law, we have a consumer law, which is Real, Real, Real Estate Business Broker Act. Uh, and we deposit that is given to by the buyer to the listing agent is protected. And this is why I mentioned about that we are responsible to report that make sure the deposit is not coming in cash, more than 10,000 and the source of funding is documented. If there is a, 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 a doubt about the legality of the money that is coming in, it needs to be reported to FinTrack. So that's where the trust deposit comes in. When the money is coming into the trust account, it cannot leave the trust account until a transaction has been completed Number two, if the deal falls apart, there is a mutual consent is secure, and then the broker of record of the listing company will release funds. If there is a dispute between the buyer and seller, it has to go to the court order before the funds are released. Now we, as a buyer broker agent, we coordinate mortgage financing, appraisal, home inspection, until all conditions are satisfied or deal is terminated. Once a, a firm agreement of purchase sale, we call APS, is sent to the lawyer to complete the transaction. In Ontario, the lawyer is the closing loop. They are the one who will complete the transaction after receiving agreement of purchase and sales and, lend, and all the amendments or any notice of fulfillment of conditions. The lender will send mortgage funds to a designated lawyer appointed by the buyer. A lawyer will also register the deed transfer and mortgage. In, in Ontario, the bank will send the mortgage document and the money to the lawyer and any fee that lawyer has to charge, bank does not pay, the, the buyer pays. So normally 350 to $400 plus HST is the fee for mortgage. And, and a transaction, depending on the volume size, uh, those uh, are uh, determined by the lawyer. We don't get involved with that. Majority of the lawyer will require insurance to cover the risk of fraud against the title. So there is a title insurance. Every realtor, every lawyer will arrange a, a title, a transfer um, uh, insurance to make sure if there is a dispute in terms of ownership, then the, 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 the buyer is protected. Deed and mortgage charge is registered electronically. Everything is done electronically now. And also lawyer will, I'm gonna put it here. The lawyer will also apply first time home buyer rebate if applicable. If someone has, buyer has never bought a property before, he or she uh, is, uh, have never bought any property in the world and, and they certify it and there is a rebate that is given to them and this is uh, allowed. So if in case of Toronto, you will get double, uh, double uh, rebate because you have uh, double tax for land transfer tax. So that there is a certificate of completion and collection of keys. So what happens is a listing agent who is listed property will get a certification of completion from the lawyer that transaction has been completely certified because they have to disperse the commission and return the 
surplus money to the to the uh, seller. So they will have to provide certification and collection of keys. Because of COVID, we are uh, asking them to leave the key in a lock box. So the buyer agent will go with the with the buyer to take the keys and give it to the give it to the buyer. So closing cost in this case, just for your purposes purposes, closing cost is approximately two percent of the purchase price, which include all expenses, including Ontario land trust tax. But if you are buying a property for Toronto, the land transfer tax will be extra because 2% will not cover the, the cost. So this is about me. I'm a fellow of Rose Institute of Canada. I'm a CIPS. I'm a CRES. I'm SRES, SRS, EMP, OPD, and ABR. And also, I'm a, I'm a owner and president of Canada Express Mortgage. So we have one step, one shop solution for every, all your needs. So I have created this connectivity, a global network for all those people who wants to work with me to exchange information, join that group. I welcome you referrals and I pay 30% referral fee upon completion of a transaction. Thank you for watching.